order which appears to freeze the assets of its staff in Iran. BBC Persian is banned in the country despite an audience of 13 million people who access our content via satellite. With me is Fran Unsworth, the director of the BBC World Service and BBC Persian's Rana Rahampour. Rana, let's uh, just start with the reasons behind the freeze. The reasons, uh, first of all, the BBC Persian is not unfamiliar with these kind of pressures. Uh, we have, on the, uh, for, for years, we have been experiencing all, uh, a wide range of harassments and intimidation. And the reason is that the Iranian authorities, specifically the judiciary, would like to stop us from working for the BBC Persian service. They would like to put a ban on impartial, unbiased journalism all over the world. So how does it feel? Well, it's disheartening. It doesn't mean that it, we will stop doing our job. Um, this is part of, part, of, part of the deal that we got. Um, it, it's unfortunate, but we will have to continue doing our job regardless of any pressure that we're under. The reaction of the BBC friend to this freeze? Well, we find it absolutely deplorable that our staff should be targeted in this way. And I don't think it's personal to any individual that works for BBC Persian. As Rana says, it's an attack on the BBC and it's an attempt really to persuade people that working for BBC Persian is a bad thing to do and this, will, this kind of thing will result if you do that. And of course, you know, the long-term implications of that are quite significant. People will be scared of. Rana referred to some of the terrible pressure that our staff and their families come under as a result of working for BBC Persian and this is just the latest in a long line of uh, them. Rana, what are the direct sort of financial implications then now on our staff? So either if you have uh, an asset, properties, cars, whatever, because many people when they move to the BBC they already had established a life there, uh, they can't sell their property any anymore. But it even goes uh, wider than that. If you co-own a property with any family member in Iran. It means they can't sell as well. So if you inherit something from, from your uh, parents and obviously your siblings, brothers, sisters might have a share in that, it means they're stuck as well. They cannot sell. So Fran, obviously we object to this. Then what? I mean, is there any kind of relationship there with the government so that we can engage? Well, not really, no. And it's very difficult, to be honest, because this was a secret order given out of a court in Evan prison, uh, which then went to other courts. So, uh, you know, the, the rule of law doesn't quite apply in, in Iran in the way that it would normally do. You can't hold some kind of judicial review of this or apply for a judicial review of this decision. So we've got to think about how we fight it. We're going to try it on a case by case basis. But it's really quite difficult. We'll do everything that we can, of course, to support our staff and their families in trying to get this lifted. BBC Persian Runner has millions of viewers who are accessing our content. How is it seen? I think that's Iran? the reason why they are putting so much pressure more on more us. Because, exactly, because of the number of viewers, because of the impact, because of uh, uh, the influence we have among our viewers, that they trust us, they believe what we say. And I think that is why the Iranian authorities feel threatened by the truth that we are trying to bring to our audiences. And Fran, when you hear this, you feel heartened, I suppose. Well, I, I do, but you know, it's another attack, actually, by an authoritarian government on journalism and free speech, which we see takes place all too often in many parts of the world, not just Iran. So this is something which must be fought. Indeed. Thank you both very much.